Your favorite NBC stars look back at 20 years of must-see TV. Next on NBC. Twenty freaking years of Thursday night. I've always wondered about Thursday nights. Twenty years of Thursday night laughs. You'll be nice. No! I'm up. I'm up. You gotta remember, the Family Ties at the beginning was not a huge hit show. This is a travesty. This is a sin against capitalism. Must see TV. I immediately think of Seinfeld. We go into NBC. We tell them we got an idea for a show about nothing. Exactly. They say it was about nothingness, and I think it was about everything that we are. I can't be with someone like me. I hate myself. Thursday nights are just riddled with sex. Are you as turned on as I am? Are you as turned on as I am? You look hot. So do you. NBC has ruled in the comedy department. I, that's just it. I'm Ross. Take the Emily. Take the Rachel. Are you I'm hungry? Gay. What? what? Are you I'm hungry? gay. What? what? Let's be careful out there. 20 years of must-see drama. Hill Street Blues changed the face of dramatic television. Most of those weapons, that's an order. L.A. Law was landmark in terms of professional women. You've got a hell of a nerve, Grace. Why? Because I dare to disagree with the great civil libertarian. I think the secret to ER is that it is a world in which incredibly dramatic things happen to every different kind of person. Now, an evening with NBC's brightest Thursday night stars and memorable moments from the most successful night in television history. It's too much! It's too much! It's 20 years of must-see TV. So happy. <laughs> For the past two decades, NBC has made Thursday night appointment television. You just don't want to miss it. Like the Today Show and the Tonight Show, Must See TV has become synonymous with NBC. I'm Eric McCormack, and for the next 90 minutes, we'll highlight the extraordinary Thursday night shows that have won over 120 Emmy Awards as we celebrate 20 years of Must See TV. Of course, one key to Must See success has been its extraordinary and unforgettable cast of characters. From Cliff Clavin to Cosmo Kramer to Jack McFarlane to Will Truman. We begin this evening with a gallery of must-see characters. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack McFarlane. Alice B. Keaton. Oh. I'm Buck Naked. I'm Chandler. I'm I am not crazy! Uh, I'm not gay. I'm responsible. I'm cheer personified. I'm not in the mood. No! Oh, God, help us! If you want to sustain a life of a series, rule number one, create characters that people will care about. Why, Grace Alden, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Adler. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> You start to depend on them. Like watching Seinfeld, you want to see Kramer come through that door this week. Hey! Yeah! And, you know, cheers. Good afternoon, everybody. It's almost a little wink to the, to the audience members at home. Gobble, gobble! Diane Chambers. She's a nice girl. Hi, Diane. Hi, Sam. <laughs> Boy, there were some bumpy roads that Diane had to travel down. Hey, everybody. The miracle? Cryogenics. Yeah, here's a little known fact. Cliff Clavin is, to himself, he's the wing nut that holds civilization together. You know, when my number is up, uh, I'll be frozen and preserved in a sub-zero container. Moments after, a doctor declares me legally brain dead. Boy, that's a tough call. <laughs> Rebecca, how? What is it you want me to do? <laughs> Originally, the Charles brothers wrote me as a bitch. Shut up! No, you shut no, up! You shut up! You shut, shut up! Me shut up! Shut up! 
the next week she'd be an idiot, and the next week she'd be flaky, and the next week she'd be smart, and the, you know, it was just sort of like whatever fit in. Bye. She was the swing girl. Ready for Betty? <laughs> Dan Fielding was raunchy and oversexed. You know those disgusting animalistic urges I used to torment you with? Yes. They're back. Oh, God, I need a woman. How's that for a segue? I get a kick out of him. I get a kick out of his innocence at times and his inability to handle things. So you're cheap as well as intellectually barren. And you're a no-talent hack. And you look stupid in a T-shirt. <laughs> my name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. I think it was this way. Georgie first, the most neurotic and dysfunctional. Were you just talking about me? What's going on? Are you telling secrets? What are you laughing at? I live my whole life in shame. Why should I die with dignity? And then Kramer. Hey, please, Jerry, I'm begging you. Please, come on, please. I wanted to explore eccentricity, not get too broad. <laughs> Fine little, little nuances, little quirks. You want to throw it away? Here's a thought. Get out! Elaine is the type of woman that you could have a difficult relationship with, but you can't really give up. You want a Christmas card? All right, here. Here's a Christmas card. Elaine was a single, independent woman making one bad choice after another. The biggest one, of course, hanging around these losers day after day. Oh, this is great! <laughs> now I'm gonna be stuck at the singles table with all the losers? No! Monica Geller. I'm that stupid. Obsessive about cleanliness. Did you clean up in here? <laughs> about order in her life. I've only got 12 hours and 36 minutes left. Move, move, move! I feel like you should have German subtitles. The mother hen is what she is. Have you ever thought about being there for her? What do you mean? You know, just be there for her. Not following you. Joey Tribbiani. He's cute. He's hot. How are you doing? Sweet, not too bright. I'm Chandler. Could I be wearing any more clothes? I'm Chandler. I make jokes when I'm uncomfortable. Chandler Bing. He's a good guy. How do I look? Um, I don't care. He likes to say he doesn't care, but he really does care. The thing that's great about Phoebe is you really never know what's going to come out of her. If we were in prison, you guys would feel like my bitches. Rachel's just delicious. She's so often at loose ends. <laughs> Ross is a hapless hero. Look at me! It's naked Ross! <laughs> oh, nude shot. Bad idea. Really? Oh, yeah. You know what? This is getting into the wrong hands. I know what guilt is. One of those touchy-feely words that people throw around that don't really mean anything. You know, like maternal or addiction. <laughs> Karen Walker is a boozy, pill-popping, shallow socialite. I got practically no responsibilities. My job's a breeze, and I got a killer rack. Good morning. <laughs> and God, how we love her. Hey, hey, it's not the Will and Grace show. It's called Just Jack. Jack is neurotic and loud and boisterous. Just Jack. Every single teenage girl emotion that you can think of. And pot of beret, and pot of beret, and souffle. I'm gay! When characters are well-drawn and relatable, people will watch and they will love you. And that's what NBC's been able to do on Thursday night. And that, my friend, is what they call closure. <laughs> we'll be right back with a look at how Must See TV came to be. From Cosby to Kramer to Karen Walker's cleavage. It's a mouthful. Not the cleavage, I mean, the say, don't go away. Buzz, 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 CTV, NBC! I need to make this bigger. Okay. How big do you want it? Big. Kodak Picture Maker lets you do more things than ever with your pictures. That should be big enough. Bigger. And it's so easy to use, you can make great pictures even better in just five minutes. Can you still do that? <laughs> Let's see. Share the moment, share life. Whoa. 
What was he thinking? Introducing a vehicle designed for your adventures in reality. The all-new, more powerful CRV from Honda. Find unbeatable savings at Ace. This Saturday through Monday. Hurry, the Ace Memorial Weekend sale ends Monday. America, say cheese, because the revolutionary insider pizza from Pizza Hut is loaded with it. Cheese inside and out. Six kinds, baked inside two thin crusts. And more cheese on top. We're Pizza Hut. We put cheese in places you've never dreamed of. The insider pizza, only from Pizza Hut. Cheesecake lovers, welcome to heaven. Philadelphia Snack Bars, the divine taste of Philly cheesecake whenever you want it. Philadelphia Snack Bars, a little taste of heaven. For real, eight-hour lip color that won't torture my lips. New Endless from L'Oreal. Comfortable eight-hour lip color. No touch-ups, no going dry. Kiss that torture goodbye. New Endless by L'Oreal Paris. Because you're worth it. Everyone's looking for that miracle cream. Mine, excellent hair color from L'Oreal. My non-drip cream just got better. Now it protects non-stop with lots of extra conditioner for beautiful color and no grays. Excellence from L'Oreal Paris. Welcome back to 20 years of must-see TV. Remember, if you can, the year 1982. Reagan was president, E.T. was a hit at the movies, and on TV, NBC was pathetic. In what was pretty much a three-channel universe, NBC was number three. Not the Peacock's proudest hour. But that sorry situation would begin to change as NBC planted the first seeds of must-see TV. Must-see TV. Must TV at that point was seen and barely see TV. I mean, if you wanted to, you know, to hide from the FBI, you'd go on NBC. NBC's bloom would begin to lift with Hill Street Blues. Set weapons inspection starts now. Hill Street Blues debuted on Thursday, January 15th, 1981, and TV drama would never be the same. Hey, let's be careful out there. Mama, bless me. Everything about it, from its multiple storylines to its huge ensemble, was like nothing that had ever been on our television. <laughs> Cinematically speaking, they just threw away the book. It was moving, it was exciting, it was almost cinema verite. The helicopter's out of here, I can't hear myself. Frank, Frank! Get back, get back, get out of sight. Holster those weapons, that's an order. Nobody watched us the first year. That we were the lowest rated television show in the history of episodic television to ever get a second season. Despite poor ratings, NBC stuck with the show. I was just wondering if we should try to get some sleep. <laughs> Why bother? Hill Street Blues! In its first season, Hill Street swept the Emmys in every major dramatic category. We thought we could survive and that people were really enjoying the show. That this was validation. Welcome to the presentation of the NBC 1982-83 primetime schedule. When NBC president Brandon Tartikoff rolled out the 82 fall schedule, Hill Street was joined on Thursday by Fame, Taxi, and a brand new sitcom set in a Boston bar. Yes, I'll, I'll take a message. Well? You're a magnificent pagan beast. Thanks. What's the message? We read three couples to play Sam and Diane, and it was obvious that Ted and Shelley had the most chemistry together. I'm over, over you. you. You're, You're over, over me. me. Well, you, you don't, don't think, think that I, I still... Well, you betcha. Your... <laughs> there was a special kind of chemistry, and not just between Ted and I, but among the whole cast. No! Come on, come on. Right, one, uh, one quick one, then I really got to fly. Where do you hear all this stupid stuff? Let's just say inquiring minds want to know, eh? The characters on Cheers all had their own octaves. 
There were their own instruments. If you looked at it as a jazz combo, it was a perfect jazz combo. They're all different instruments that just blended perfectly. Kiss your butt goodbye! Unfortunately, the ratings for Cheers were perfectly lousy. You think you're doing very good work, you're doing good shows, and you'd see the Nielsen's and nobody's, nobody cares. There was that one historic week that we were dead last in the ratings, which we, none of us will ever forget. Who the hell do we think we're kidding? We're all a bunch of pathetic dropouts. We knew we had something, and we knew the network was on our side. Do not worry about the ratings. Keep doing good work. Like Hill Street Blues, Cheers overcame its low ratings to take home a first season Emmy for Outstanding Series. And then people really started tuning in, and then ratings went up, 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 up. But by 1984, there was only one situation comedy rated in the top ten. Some said the sitcom was dead and NBC was still at the bottom of the ratings. In the fall of 84, one show would single-handedly turn things around for Situation Comedy and for NBC. Oh, you shouldn't have. Starring comedian Bill Cosby, the Cosby Show featured everyday life with the Huxtable family. Claire. Claire. Do you want me to destroy him now? Do something. It's the truth of family life. I'm going to say this only one time. Stop it! It's quiet. Dad has spoken. There will be peace in the valley. You have a career. You're out of the house. And when you come home... Hi. Hi, dear to what should be your refuge. <laughs> you have to be available to the people that you live with. Who wants to play? Uh, your mother and I are playing right now. That's the comedy of it. You love them, love them, it's love them, and you can't wait to be rid of them. The most groundbreaking thing about Cosby was that he universalized all the problems everybody's going through, and he happened to be a black man. Really created uh, a whole new image for black people in America. I've been married 20 years, Mr. Lee, and each day my wife and I grow closer and closer together, mainly because we're afraid of the children. <laughs> the Cosby Show became the highest rated show in America for five years in a row, and took NBC to number one. It didn't just turn a network around, it, it turned television around. People used to say to me during those years, oh, you're America's most popular father. I said, no, I'm America's most popular Caucasian father. You plan on being mad at us for the rest of your life? That is my plan. <laughs> Following Cosby, Michael J. Fox played a conservative teenager with liberal parents on Family Ties. I did something incredible today, something I told myself I'd never do. You helped a Democrat cross the street? They created this character that really represented something that was happening at that point, which was this reverse rebellion. Would you do something you knew was wrong? <laughs> and this guy, like this hardcore 16-year-old, ultra-conservative, you know, Nixon-worshipping, you know, I don't know what he was. Hi. Sorry I had to answer the door myself. Our butler's off tonight. <laughs> This was a family where the parents and the children had wildly divergent philosophies about how to approach life, particularly the Alex character. I think people want to see how other people do it. How do you handle this situation? Look, look at that mom talking to that kid. If Kimberly doesn't like you or your family for who they are, then maybe she isn't worth caring about at all, don't you think? Are you going to wear your hair like that or are you going to put it out? <laughs> Creator Gary David Goldberg had intended Family Ties to focus on the parents, but Fox's breakout performance stole the show. This is a travesty. This is a sin against capitalism. <laughs> Wasn't any conscious thing, certainly, on my part, like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, take over the show now. Uh, listen, I was just happy for the free bagels. You're a snob. You know that? I know that. <laughs> I think the Alex P. Keaton character was just, the timing was so perfect, just the era that we were in. It was dynasty. It was, you know, Reaganomics and all that kind of thing. Alex seemed to embody all of the values that were fairly odious at the time, but he did it in such an engaging manner that he was a lovable scamp. I want to be with you. I want to hold you. I want to open a joint bank account with you. <laughs> started in 1984. 
Cosby at 8 o'clock. Right behind it, Family Ties. Uh, Mr. Tartikoff, uh, what's the secret of your success? I will kowtow to no one. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Cosby is on the phone for you? <laughs> oh, God, the sandwiches! Uh, the 9.30 show in NBC's legendary 84 lineup was the slapstick sitcom Night Court. Doing well on a Thursday in 1984 meant the nation laughed at your joke. Lee! Guilty. Motion. Leniency. Granted. Fine. Fifty. Finished. Freebie. Forget it. <laughs> After all the sophisticated and wonderful and clever comedy that was on before us, we were the seltzer down your pants show. I think that Night Court had its own reality. I mean, it was uh, lowbrow humor. That was just really funny. May I request that the prosecutor refrain from ogling me during my closing statements? Does the prosecutor have anything pertinent to add? <laughs> John Larroquette was lecherous prosecutor Dan Fielding. He said things on television that I don't think had ever been said before. I'm Wendy Hampton with the secretarial pool. Oh, yeah? I've taken a few dips in there myself. <laughs> Okay, now I am officially overwhelmed. In his first season, Larry Kett won the first of a record four consecutive Emmys. His fourth Emmy was for the 87-88 season. It was also Cheers' first season without Shelley Long. See you in six months. Right. Right. I needed to move on in my personal life. I needed to, to move on in, in my professional life. I'll see you in six months. Okay? Okay. Okay. We were uh, terrified in Shelley Long. Critics had written this off. One critic said, cheers ended when Shelley Long walked out the door. Have a good life. As it turns out, cheers had a nice life for six more seasons after Shelley Long left. But coming up, The Cosby Show and Cheers finally say farewell. And NBC kisses its ratings goodbye. Until a show about nothing saves the day. And yada, 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 the peacock is back. Discover the Forgotten Lash with Lash Discovery from Maybelline. The lash-catching mini brush gets to lashes others can leave behind. Corner to corner, top and bottom. For longer, new multitudes of lashes. Lash Discovery, now in waterproof. Maybe it's Maybelline. Because sun damage happens every day, not just at the beach. Introducing Neutrogena Healthy Defense Daily Moisturizer. The only SPF 30 moisturizer recommended number one by dermatologists. Its light, non-greasy formula helps prevent the signs of aging. Neutrogena Healthy Defense Moisturizer. Song Ultima. You're watching 20 years of must see TV on NBC. Tomorrow, you finally thought you had the house to yourself, but now a growing trend of the American family. Parents letting their adult kids move back home. A survival guide, NBC Nightly News tomorrow. Date on Tuesday. Is the meat you're buying as fresh as you think? A hidden camera investigation you must see. Date line Tuesday, 10 9 Central on NBC. Grab life during the National Minivan Sales Event. Whether you're a planter, a painter, or a parent, it's a great time to buy a Dodge Caravan. Now you get seven years or 100,000 miles of engine and transmission protection, something you don't get from Ford, GM, Honda, or Toyota. And for a limited time, Dodge gives you a $2,500 cash allowance or 0% financing, plus make no payments for 90 days. Hurry, don't miss your chance to drive America's best-selling minivan during the National Minivan Sales Event.
Police say this man killed a nurse and shot her friend. Tonight at 10 on NBC5. The trail that led to his arrest. And police are looking to give you a ticket if you forget to do something really simple. Tonight at 10 on NBC5. Your source for live local late-breaking news. One, two, three. Life shouldn't be complicated. That's why Chevy's making it as simple as one, two, three. Get either 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 cash back on every new 2002 Chevy truck. Or choose 1929 or 3.9% financing. So make it easy on yourself. Get to your local Chevy dealer. Thousands of North Texans are crossing the border to pay a low price for their prescriptions. But NBC5's Mike Snyder explains why you should think twice about heading south for savings. A consumer investigation tonight at 10. Traffic Troubles with Gridlock Busters, weekday mornings from 5 to 7. Where would we have been without The Cosby Show? By the fall of 87, The Cosby Show had been the number one show on TV for two years in a row. And Family Ties and Cheers were numbers two and three. The Thursday night lineup was a powerhouse, the New York Yankees of television. Then, NBC moved Family Ties to Sunday, Hmm. Just this Sunday. And the man who saved the network expanded his Thursday night empire with the Cosby Show spin-off. Programming is fun. It was a great time in NBC's history to have Cosby and a different world on. Who is that? Mm -mm. Well, well, well. We dealt with the best of college life. But at the core, we were doing shows about apartheid, voter registration, AIDS. I didn't get AIDS from a blood transfusion or by doing drugs. I got it by having unprotected sex with my boyfriend. It was so controversial at the time, the advertisers wanted to pull out. We could say condom but not show it, or we could hold the condom but not say it. And I was like... The condom part's the most important part of this whole episode. I don't want to be thinking about dying the first time we make love. Believe me, you won't. Joining a different world on Thursday nights in the fall of 87 was L.A. Law. That whole yuppie thing was going on. Each character was feeling that they wanted more in their lives. They wanted more in their careers. They wanted more in their love life. More, bigger, better, faster. I want it now, fast. Mitch! Mitch! Ah! You can keep your damn fingers to yourself. Hi, Grace. Go to hell, Victor. L.A. Law creator Stephen Bochco combined drama and comedy in new and shocking ways. I didn't actually touch him, but I'm pretty sure he's dead. If he is, I got tips on his office. Stephen is just an honest writer. And he's got a funny, twisted sense of humor. But look, we're talking about the 80s, for God's sake. Got you! Careful! Oh. Again, play it like it's Father Knows Best? Uh-uh. I want to know who is on trial here. I warn you. I warn you! If I can't get justice here, I will get a gun, and I'll do it myself. That's enough. We're in contempt. Yo, for five years, L.A. Law and The Cosby Show bookended the most popular night on TV. Until Cosby called it quits. Bill and the entire Cosby Show family. It was all about celebration. Grandparents, grandchildren, everybody was there. With love and appreciation, NBC. The last episode aired on April 30th, 1992. Then, a year after Cosby went off the air, on May 20th, 1993, 93 million viewers showed up for Last Call at Cheers. It was a last moment with some of television's most beloved characters. 
They were all good-hearted and they were all so flawed that you could do nothing but root them on to victory. And as you notice, none of them won. Still. You said that you had something that you wanted to ask me. Will you mm, marry me? <sighs> of course I won't. What? With Rebecca Howe, she never gave up. And so the audience never gave up on her. Will you marry me? Never! Ah! It was wonderful to work there again, to be Diane again, to be with Sam, to be with all the gang. Hey, everybody. Diane and I are together again. The hardest part for me was that ultimate coming apart again. I think it should have been the first show in history that never ended until everyone in the cast was dead. Thanks for the perfecto, Sammy. Yeah. Thanks for staying, guy. Same to you. Wouldn't be the same without you, Sam. They said cut, and okay, that's it. We're finished. And I said, okay, that's... Then everybody kind of, uh... It's a river of tears. It's all right. We're closed. With Cosby and Cheers gone, ratings plummeted. The network needed a miracle. See, now, to me, that button's in the worst possible spot. Look at it. It's too high. You know... Seinfeld tested very, very badly. You know that I was almost a lawyer? <laughs> that close, huh? You better believe it. The audiences didn't like the show. They didn't like the characters. The only thing they liked was the stand-up. So they're showing me on television the detergents getting out blood stains. I mean, come on, you got a T-shirt with blood stains all over it. Maybe laundry isn't your biggest problem right now. After the pilot, we said, you need a girl. I don't really have an apartment. I kind of sleep around. <laughs> there was definitely a chemistry from the get-go. A, a comedic chemistry. Up was down. Black was white. Good was bad. There was nice. Yes! I can't be with someone like me. I hate myself. Everybody on Seinfeld show was sort of dysfunctional. <laughs> but the, the Costanza's more so than anybody else. You were the one who smothered him. I did not him. You smothered. He couldn't get in the air. He couldn't breathe. He was suffocating. You'd be nice. <laughs> From the spring of 90 to the summer of 93, Seinfeld bounced back and forth between Thursday and Wednesday night. It's too much. It's too much. I kept thinking, boy, I hope they're smart enough to keep this on the air because I know it's good and I know people are going to catch on to it because the writing was such a cut above. My mother caught me. <laughs> caught you? Doing what? You know... The contest, I'm sad to say, did actually come from a personal experience. I know I could hold out longer than you. Care to make it interesting? I thought to myself, couldn't be masturbation, because they wouldn't have that on television. I come home and find my son treating his body like it was an amusement park. <laughs> but uh, it was. I'm out. I was waiting for somebody to come and shut us down. You're out? The queen is dead. I kept building it up in my mind. They're not going to let us do it. What am I going to quit? I'm going to quit. I'm not going to. I'm just, I'm just not. I'm just going to quit. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to say, you don't do it. I'm quitting. Meanwhile, I'm dating a virgin. I'm in this contest. Something's got to give. Larry David got a, uh, an Emmy for that one. The series also won the Emmy Let's for Best Comedy in 93. And that fall, Seinfeld was part of NBC's new Thursday lineup. We, uh, we started off so small. <laughs> It's going to be easy to thank people because there's like two people to thank here that even knew we were on. Hello. I know many of you out there are having separation anxiety now that Cheers is going off the air. Well, rest assured, you have nothing to worry about. Thursday night will be as exciting as ever with Mad About You, Wings, Seinfeld, and my personal favorite, Frasier. Spinoffs had a horrible track record. And frankly, we were very... Uh, nervous about being poorly compared to Cheers. Hello, Seattle. I have a very special guest with me today. My brother, the eminent psychiatrist, Dr. Niles Crane. Hello, Emerald City. What's doing? What's happening? Frazier's in Seattle. He's uh, there because he realized the life he had with Lilith was uh, falling apart. He decided to break as far away as he could. Do people ever come up to you after they met me and say, how can that guy be your father? He's nothing like you. Because they've been saying that to me about you for the last 40 years. <laughs> Frazier won the Emmy for Outstanding Comedy in its first season. But the following year, Frazier was sent packing. We took Frazier, a crown jewel, and we moved it to Tuesday. I don't believe this! 
there were screams and, and threats. If you said that we were pissed off, I think you would have been being very polite. I've never been treated so shabbily in my entire life, and I have a good mind to come over there and create an embarrassing scene. Niles, they've already hung up. Oh, thank God. Kelsey Grammer called me, and he said, we'll do the best show on television whatever night you put us on. We ultimately had a very successful run on, on Tuesday. That one move pushed NBC to be number one that year, and we didn't look back. Who's got the best talk show in Seattle? We do, we do. All right! <laughs> now, some of you may be saying, wait a minute, Eric. What about Dear John and Wings or fleeting must-see moments like Grand and Rhythm and Blues? Not to worry, we'll get to them and a lot more a little later on. Up next, Seinfeld swan song, Friends, ER, and the marketing slogan that try as we might, we'll never forget. What TV, what NBC. When 20 years of Must See TV returns. Must, must see, see TV, NBC. Should be doing that professionally. Two. For generations, we Bushes have kept the family recipe for our baked beans a secret. Roll that beautiful bean footage. We slow cook our beans with a special blend of herbs and spices, according to our secret family recipe. And here it is. Three generations of Bushes are counting on us to keep it a secret. You can trust me, Jay. I know, boy. But I'm not taking any chances. Ah, oh, that hurts. Try Bush's country-style baked beans. finds two glasses of great tasting Tropicana Pure Premium every day can significantly lower your blood pressure. Sunshine day, everybody seems so happy today. Tropicana Pure Premium. It's a sunshine day. Feel pure good every day. I hate it when he does that. Sorry about the dust. <laughs> After the new roomy seven-passenger Chevy Trailblazer, everything else just seems kind of weak. Ah, I left the bagels in the jet. The new Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. I always keep it in my pants. Under my hat. Do you want to see it? To my heart. In my pants. Under my hat. Up my sleeve. On my back. Anywhere I want. It's so small. Stay Free brings you a unique maxi that fights, 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 leaks to the core. The Stay Free Maxi. The only maxi with a unique anti leak core that traps liquid even better. And Stay Free's four wall protection. Side to side, front to back. Remarkable leak protection. protection from Stay Free. Now Stay Free introduces the only overnight maxi with four wall protection against leaks. One, two, three. Life shouldn't be complicated. That's why Chevy's making it as simple as one, two, three. Get either 1,000 or 2,000. Or 3,000 cash back on every new 2002 Chevy Tron. Like 2,000 cash back or 1.9% financing on select Silverados and Avalanche. So make it easy on yourself. Get to your Texas Chevy dealer. Welcome back once again to 20 years of Must See TV. I'm still Eric McCormack, and the year is 1993. When we left our story, Seinfeld had saved NBC's bacon with the misadventures of four miserable, maladjusted Manhattanites. 
Seinfeld celebrated single life, and with family ties and the Cosby show off the air, Thursday was no longer family night. In fact, when Mad About You made its must-see debut, it was the first new Thursday night show in nine seasons centered on a married couple. I put up with your crap and you put up with my crap. That's marriage? This is what I'm thinking. I wrote it with uh, another guy, Danny Jacobson, and his wife is just as nervous as my wife that we're being revealed. It doesn't bother you that we haven't had sex in five days? Hello. Everything was a source of angst because you're in love and the love is new. Sunday will be a week. What's going on with us? What's going on is that we're married five months and the sexual part is over. <laughs> no, I... You just say you were wrong. I'm saying this is not the most right I've ever been. You are correct. <laughs> I'm Rachel. I'm Joey. I'm Phoebe. I'm not doing this. Come on. In the fall of 94, Mad About You was followed by a brand new Thursday night comedy. Exactly. Friends, Thursday nights. We loosely based it on what it was like when we lived in New York. We were in our 20s. This is not even a date. It's just two people going out to dinner and not having sex. Sounds like a date to me. <laughs> Friends is about that period in your life where you're out on your own for really the first time in your life and your friends tend to become your surrogate family. You need anything, you can always come to Joey. Joey, stop hitting on her. It's her wedding day. What? Like there's a rule or something? <laughs> I'm really excited. It's going to be a good experience. You can't really get bored watching the show because there's so, so much, much going on and so many different characters to watch. Uh, no, oh, no, no, don't. Stop cleansing my aura. <laughs> The show seems like it can, it can and probably will go in so many different directions. I'd love to see uh, a marriage somewhere in the group. I'm getting married today! Woo! Yeah, you are! Oh, woo -hoo! You think you knew I was here? I'm Ross. Take thee, Emily. Take thee, Rachel. I'm really looking forward to this show hopefully being on for a while. Anticipating what might be is, ex is exciting. So happy. I don't know what was in the water in Burbank. Mad About You at 8, Friends at 8.30, Seinfeld at 9, followed by ER. The first time I sat down and read the script of ER as a pilot, it felt incredibly real. It seemed like real doctors doing real medicine in a real environment. <laughs> We have a couple of doctors to keep it looking real. Some lady was bleeding to death, and I grabbed the tongue to press her. You know, I'm... <laughs> Two days, cyanotic in the crib. ER came onto the air, and it was suddenly like the audience was a fly on the wall in a real-life hospital situation. Oh, yuck. Everyone is so old and sick around here. Yeah, this is a hospital. The whole show was really seen from the doctor's point of view, where you didn't get very involved in the patient's lives at all. Had your chance. I was young. I was a fool. <laughs> You're still a fool. What drove it, it was, were these people going to make it alive to the end of their shift? We don't want to deliver in the hallway. After only four episodes had aired, ER was TV's number one drama. Yeah. At some point, we went, well, hey, maybe we have something here. We've got this Thursday night. It's appointment television. What do we call it? We were inspired by Don Olmeyer, our uh, boss at that time. His inspiration was, come up with something or I'll fire you. I don't think I said, come up with a slogan or you're fired. I think I said, come up with a slogan or I'll break your legs. We had a creative meeting. Nobody had come up with anything. And some guy in the back of the room said, well, I must see TV. I said, OK, that's it. No focus groups, no deep research, just how about must see TV? Yeah, let's go with that. And it seeped its way all the way into everyone's brain stem, which is good or bad, you know? Between 94 and 98, the must-see TV hits ER and Seinfeld traded places as the number one show on TV. Then, on May 14th, 98, Seinfeld went out on top. Roy Bessel, Alan Carr! I'm gonna capture this. My first thought was, well, I'd like to get them together somehow for a long time. Hold it right there. What? They're under arrest. Jail. How can I get them in jail? It's a merit in law. I never heard of. And bring back all these people from the series to testify against them. Virgin. 
Nazi. It was sad to say goodbye. It really was. It was sad to say goodbye. Well, it's only a year. That's not so bad. It ended up in prison using the, uh, the opening lines from the pilot. See, now, to me, that button is in the worst possible spot. Haven't we had this conversation before? You think? The two years after Seinfeld saw several must-see misfires. Then, in 2000, NBC sent reinforcements to Thursday night. Uh, a cane. Uh, a, a railing. Ah! Oh, come on, come here, another clue. Uh, each other. Things that you lean on! <laughs> Will and Grace, I mean, the friendship is, is everything. It's the core. See, there's this one teensy little complication. Will and Grace, two people who will be perfect for one another, but for this one little thing. Are you I'm hungry? Gay. What? what? Are you I'm hungry? gay. What? Everybody knows the love story's over at the kiss, and uh, this way we were in good shape. Nothing. Anything. Sorry, nothing. no, it's... <laughs> The basic setup of the show is not groundbreaking. It's four characters. It's, it could be the Lucy show. It's friends minus two. Knock, knock. Anybody homo? Hi, uh, hi, Karen. Grace, the reason you're not in a relationship's on line one. <laughs> the fact, though, that the homosexuality is treated as just another character trait is, I guess, what makes it unique. Oops, I did it again. I played with your heart, got lost in the game. Oh, baby, baby, I just totally it. When you think about what we get away with on Will and Grace, I mean, it's unbelievable. I'll need a little money from the ATM. Denied. Denied. Approved. Will and Grace was joined on Thursday's Fall 2000 schedule by Just Shoot Me. Cancel my afternoon. Done. Call for my car. Already here. What's today's Marmaduke? Uh, he's driving a bus. <laughs> That dog, it's like he's a person. George Siegel said there's four actors in the cartoon on this show, and you figure out who's who. You had sex with Adrian? Please, stop being so crude. Made love. Four times. If we gave the stuff that we give to David Spade to a less likable actor, they would hate him. Ooh, on the Finchy scale of titillating, I give uh, her eight spanks. <laughs> it took us a while to get there, but we finally ended up on Thursday, and it's great. We put the fun back in dysfunctional. <laughs> the biggest thing about Must See TV is that people know what it stands for. There's an expectation not only to be number one, but to have the shows of the highest quality, to get the most Emmy nominations. There's nothing like the pressure that comes with having to make sure that Thursday night remains must-see TV. When Friends leaves, it'll be tough. But you know what? They survived Seinfeld leaving. They survived Cosby. They, they find a way to survive, these guys. See you next time. Let's look at a clip. We'll be right back with a revealing look at the primal passions that motivate much of must-see TV. Simply stated, it's time for must-see sex. Oh, but it says... To, oh, all right. <laughs> There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Except that everywhere, dogs are. There are gentle cleansers, and there are makeup removers. Neutrogena Fresh Foaming Cleanser is both. Just ask your dermatologist. It gently removes dirt, oil, even eye makeup. Nothing here. Just refreshingly clean skin. Neutrogena Fresh Foaming Cleanser. Is your kid being a kid? Call Stanley Steamer. Stanley Steamer. Tough on dirt. Gentle on carpet. Orange, you glad it's summer! Blueberry green! Sweet cherry kisses by the pool! The pool is cool! Summer's got the bright! Water's so blue! I'm very, very glad! I'm very, very glad it's summer! Orange, you baby! Orange, you glad it's summer! Orange, you! Orange, you glad it's summer! 
watching 20 years of must-see TV on NBC. NBC Wednesday, are you game for this? <laughs> Never before seen game show moments. Doesn't she have pretty nipples, uh, pretty dimples there? <laughs> Rare and uncensored. Name something men wear to bed. Condoms. <laughs> the most outrageous game show moments. NBC Wednesday, 8, 7 Central. Some things were just made for Texas, like the all-new Lone Star Edition Dodge Ram Quad Cab that suits Texas like a cattleman's glove. It's loaded with Texas-sized power, hefty cast aluminum 20-inch wheels, a great CD stereo, cruise, tilt, air, and lots more. Grab one right now and grab a huge $1,500 cash allowance. See the new Lone Star Edition Dodge Ram in Truckville, Texas, your nearby Dodge dealer. Grab Dodge's 7100 powertrain pledge. Ford, GM, and Toyota don't match it. It's not about answering the questions, but about questioning the answers. The all-new Aereo SX from Suzuki. It has more standard horsepower than Honda Civic, Ford Focus, or Toyota Matrix, plus all the room you're looking for. In my car. You knew this was coming. You just didn't know from where. Introducing the new Suzuki Aereo SX. Drive on. Get your Suzuki Aereo SX today for $219 per month with only $19.99 to start. Life shouldn't be complicated. That's why Chevy's making it as simple as one, two, three. Get either one thousand or two thousand or three thousand cash back on every new two thousand two Chevy SUV, or choose one nine, two nine, or three point nine percent financing. So make it easy on yourself. Get to your Texas Chevy dealer. NBC5 Today, the number one morning news, weekdays from 5 to 7. Must see TV, must see TV, NBC. Oh, you must see this. Man, what I wouldn't give. Welcome back to 20 years of must see TV. Look, let's get down to basics. At the heart of Thursday night comedy and drama is the pursuit of the opposite sex. Or in the case of my own show, the same sex. It's fun. It's fundamental. It's must-see sex. Thursday nights are just riddled with sex. Well, sex is a very funny subject. Look, you want to have sex right now? Do you want to have sex with me right now? Everyone wants it, and no one gets enough of it. Can you imagine me in a three-way? Hey, I can barely imagine you in a two-way. <laughs> we have these incredibly attractive people who are talking about sex all the time. I mean, what's not to like? I'm talking steamy, illegal in 48 states kind of sex. I hate you. Are you as turned on as I am? More. <laughs> you look hot. So do you. <laughs> Is it just me or is he breaking the mood here? There certainly have been shows like Mad About You where there was a married couple, but a lot of the characters on Friends, Seinfeld, and Grace, not married. I'm really looking forward to you and me having sexual intercourse. <laughs> Nina, tell, tell my dad I sleep with a lot of women. <laughs> it's all about the bionic eye. It's like... Doo -doo 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 Lock on, Maverick. We've got one. Zoof. Ooh, looks like one straight from the herd. <laughs> a single guy has more possibilities of getting laid. I slept with Elaine last night. <laughs> anytime you can root a character on, anytime you can go, God, please have sex, please have sex, please have sex, please sleep with me. How many people have not felt angst and suffering in their search for the perfect mate? I am dating a supermodel zoologist. Is that so hard to believe? 
terms of Frazier, you just root for him to be happy, but it just always seemed like he would be right to the doorstep. Oh, that was a cheap shot! And he couldn't close the deal. Would it be a, a dreadful contretemps if I kissed you right now? You can always try. I don't know what's going on between Lilith and Frazier. They have a very fiery relationship. Come to me, my white hot flame. <laughs> Oh, Sam, wait. What? Uh, what? 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 God. I knew you couldn't be spontaneous. What? What? What is it? Huh? I was just going to say I almost forgot my purse. Oh. Well, let me get that for you, sweetheart. In the real world, relationships, they can only sustain that sort of flirtatious, goings on so long we say it's over and yet we still end up in each other's arms and then it either goes forward or it falls flat and it's gone hugging and kissing perhaps lightly at first but <laughs> then with open mouths hungry probing tongues go on please well do you like to watch the whole key to the universe the second you let the guy have you he's gone but how long can you keep a guy dancing it's hot and i don't know how much longer i can keep my clothes on they kind of turn me on a dial tone turns you on how do you feel fine there's no such thing as free lunch or free sex on Seinfeld. Something the matter? No. If you have sex with somebody, it's going to come back to haunt you in some way. He did the move. What move? You know. The move. I can't believe it. He stole my move. Where in the hell did you learn that? You mean the, uh, the Venus butterfly? Ah, the Venus butterfly. The Venus? Venus butterfly. How could he make me feel that good? <laughs> it was the closest thing I have ever experienced to pure ecstasy. Mm. <laughs> People still go, well, what exactly was the Venus butterfly? People kept saying, when's Arnie going to get together with Roxanne? When's Arnie going to get together with Roxanne? Yeah! A lot of uh, sexual tension had gone into oh, creating that. What in God's name? I, w I, w I was working with the electricians. Oh, me too. They said, we want you to do this thing about you and Courtney Cox having an affair. There's only one. Monica! One of my favorite episodes is the one where Tom Selleck, who is playing Monica's boyfriend, Richard, and Ross stay over for the night. One, two, three. The girls are really excited about it, and they find out there's only one condom. Okay. I'll give this to you now, okay. if you can tell me where we keep the dustpan. The whole Thursday night is just about scoring. It's, it's dirty. It's not in the Bible. Commandment number one in the gay Bible, thou shalt not covet my ex's ass. <laughs> Will and Grace is the dirtiest show on TV. <laughs> I watch the show, I'm like, we, could, we can't get away with any of this stuff. And they are filthy. What were you thinking? This is not me, okay? I'm a good girl from Schenectady. So you two kiss and make up because the three of us are gonna get it on! People want to get laid. And it's really kind of the most basic struggle in life, isn't it? To, you know, do it. Rachel and I will kiss for one minute. <laughs> totally worth it. It was one good minute. Good night. Good night. We'll be back with highlights from the three landmark shows that have made Thursday the most dramatic night on television. Hill Street Blues, L.A. Law, and E.R. Next. And hey... Let's be careful out there. Must see TV, NBC.
When I get older, losing my hair Many years from now Will you still be sending me a valentine? Birthday greetings, bottle of wine If we'd been out till quarter to three Would you lock the door? Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? When I'm 64 Why do I rent from Enterprise? For more cargo room. More people room. Or more headroom. Enterprise. So easy it's like having a second car. Or third. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Thanks. Michelob Light. There you go, baby. The great taste of Michelob Light makes any occasion seem special. Introducing Almay Kinetin, an anti-aging breakthrough discovered in plants. You'll see dramatic results without irritation, with no stinging, no peeling, no prescription. And it really works. Almay, the pure source for beautiful. We need your help, Mr. Hayes. Your brother was working on something with us. My twin brother was CIA. When do we start? Now. From producer Jerry Bruckheimer and director Joel Schumacher. Does it play DVDs? It's a portable thermonuclear weapon. But does it play DVDs? Anthony Hopkins. You'd better learn this stuff. Oh, what? I'll kill you. Chris Rock. Do whatever it takes to serve your country. Give me towel. Bad Company. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, June 7th. They gave up everything to be together, and this Tuesday is their night, the season finale of Frasier. You want to make my dreams come true? This is my dream. Be there as they take the next step, then the season finale of America's favorite new comedy, Scrubs. Brace yourself there, Nubby. Where a year of secrets, a year of surprises, all come down to the last three minutes. Tick-tock, Clarice. The Frasier and Scrubs season finales, NBC Tuesday. NBC Wednesday, the West Wing season finale. A political assassination. You can make it look like the plane went down. A new face in the West Wing. And a final confrontation with a stalker. Something horrible happened. Then, it's the controversial season finale of Law & Order. A neighborhood kills a suspected terrorist. War on the home front. Was it vigilante justice or murder? You lit a fuse you couldn't put out. The season finales of West Wing and Law & Order, NBC Wednesday. In the past two decades, over 40 sitcoms have appeared on NBC on Thursday night, but only three dramas. Three critically acclaimed, groundbreaking, Emmy-winning ensemble dramas. Hill Street Blues, L.A. Law, and E.R. changed the way dramatic television is made and gave us some of the most colorful characters and inspired performances in the 20-year history of must-see TV. Everything that happened on Hill Street Blues never happened on police drama. Hill Street Blues debuted in January of 81. These were not your typical television characters. They were not one-dimensional characters. Here they are with all their troubles and all their, their personal problems. Damn it, Faye, every time you blow in here, you embarrass the hell out of me. And their professional problems. You're a drunk, my friend. You're saying I'm finished, aren't you? And there they are, bam, right in your face. <clears throat> Two years ago, I bit off a nose. That's one lousy nose! The characters were dirtier and raunchier and more flawed. Ergo, more heroic. It's a gut check, Frank. And you wouldn't want to be accused of having a bunch of daisies where your cinch belt ought to be. Stevens 
trademark on all of his work is his ability to recognize so many normal looking people. I'm begging Rodriguez. I beg you, please don't kill you. He said the magic words. <laughs> they ought to look like real, hard scrabble, knock around folks. I'll have you up on charges. With the exception of Veronica, who was stunningly gorgeous. That young woman has a very handsome carriage. I didn't have a role model to follow. Not on television. There had not been a woman who really stood on level ground intellectually. A person who's principled, who's attractive, who's sexual. You want an open relationship? You've got an open relationship. At the emotional center of the show was the stormy, steamy relationship between public defender Joyce Davenport and precinct captain Frank Ferrillo, played by Daniel J. Travanti. You believed that Ferrillo and Davenport really did it. You want to make love? And really enjoyed it. And that was the difference. It could cost you your life. Risk it. Hey, 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 man, I shot way in line here now. Come on, are you gonna kill him? Stop! Never had more fun with anybody in my life than with Michael Warren. I mean, he's just... was my brother. And we don't want to collect a crowd. A crowd! A crowd! One of the what? reasons people were drawn to the Helen Rinko is because of, of the chemistry. They were 180 degrees away from one another. And in order to survive out in the streets, they had to trust one another. <laughs> Gunned down in the pilot, Hill and Renko survived. Despite low ratings, so did Hill Street Blues, winning the Emmy for Outstanding Drama four years in a row. But the show's final Emmy-winning season was the last for actor Michael Conrad. And let's be careful out there, huh? He'd been sick for quite some time, and we knew it. Michael Conrad died, you know, three days after his last roll call. I don't think the show ever fully recovered from the loss of Michael Conrad. On February 2nd, 1984, Hill Street Blues aired an offbeat homage to the late Sergeant Esterhaus. Everybody dumps a little bit of his ashes out. The good sergeant's ashes were unceremoniously swept away. And it's a street sweeper, and it goes right over his ashes. <laughs> that is, that is so Bochco-esque. Stephen Bochco's unique combination of comedy and drama was also in evidence when his second must-see drama, L.A. Law, debuted in the fall of 86. I had a very specific plan to sort of put under one umbrella all the various specialties of the law. Benora versus Cromwell Aircraft. Status quo. It was a show where people talked a lot. Glasband versus Glasband. A referral from Harley Hunt. My client's husband did Harley's last facelift. We were very adult sophisticated funny smart Seventy-five thousand on the wrongful death claim for the little boy why is it you lose an eye you get a million dollar verdict you lose your life and it's only worth a fraction of that this lawyer i know advises his clients if you run somebody over back up and finish off the job compared to maiming wrongful death's a bargain people love you know to get inside people's lives and you know and see what their flaws are and pick them apart and all the workplace, the, you know, hating your boss, uh, dealing with, you know, your colleagues, uh, the, the pecking order, the backbiting, you know, all that stuff. You guys made up the lies here, not but you. You tried to use I... them for extortion. You think your board of directors is going to stand for that? You make me sick. L.A. Law was landmark in terms of professional women. You've got a hell of a nerve, Grace. Why? Because I dare to disagree with the great civil libertarian. Arnie, we need to have a talk. What about? A raise. She asked for something that was do her. I'm worth what I'm worth. And if I can't get it here, then I'll get it somewhere else. I, I thought we were friends. What was wonderful about Becker? I thought that we could count on each other. Was that you really could love him and hate him at the same time. Every human being is a mixture of good and evil. There is no perfect character. What the hell's the matter with you? Your wife and 20 of your closest friends are in the reception area waiting to give you a surprise party. That's what's the matter with me. We tried to figure out all the different places that Arnie Becker had sex. Relax, Mr. Becker. You are my prisoner. Bochco always nudged the edge. Horse, like bitch! 
you know, Tourette's syndrome wasn't talked about. Did you ever call any of your female co-workers bitch? I wasn't calling them bitch. I was saying bitch. So the burden of your behavior should be on them, not on you. Burden <laughs> bitch. Well, the show had a social consciousness. I really appreciate Stephen Bochco for that because he likes to bring those ideas and issues to the table for a debate. I mean, to be a part of the first lesbian kiss on television, to be a part of that kind of revolutionary television was great. Of all the shocking moments on L.A. Law, none was more stunning than the 1991 episode in which the hard-driving character Rosalind Shays suddenly got the shaft, literally. We found out about Rosalind's demise the day that, the, that we were handed the script. We didn't know she was leaving, and neither did she, by the way. Neither did Diana Muldaur. Wasting the time of six attorneys fighting over a moot point? Nobody could believe it. It's not a moot point, Leland. It's a contingency. It's what every good lawyer plans for. It was a reflection of what life is. Here today, gone in an instant. I don't resent you, Leland. If anything, maybe I resent myself. We're staying with a man who doesn't love you. I really don't want to talk about it. Ah! Oh. oh, my God! Hill Street went off, L.A. Law came on. Well, L.A. Law went off, E.R. came on. Come on. Body temp's too low. I'm not getting a pulse. E.R. rushed to the top of the ratings in the fall of 94. Get up there, you hear me? You want it? E.R. continued Thursday's groundbreaking dramatic tradition. You want to surprise people in the same way that life surprises people. We try to realistically show how chaotic life is. Don't need depressions. We need to crack her chest. It is a world in which incredibly dramatic things happen to every different kind of person. Literally, life and death human drama. I mean, car crash kind of human drama. Car! The things that have always stood out for me on the shows because it's so chaotic is the moments of quiet. Hi. 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 I'm Dr. Mark Green. We had some wonderful episodes that people remember. Uh, the, the Green's killing of the, of the baby's mother and Love's Labor's Lost. You're what you to deliver this baby! It was the first time the audience spent that much time in one world. You cut across the lower segment of the universe. You're asking me? I'm asking God. I'll always remember uh, when Green goes to tell uh, the father that his wife has died in childbirth. We don't go into the room. We never heard the dialogue. I think those are the things that people really talk about the next day. The second season episode, Hell in High Water, was a water cooler moment for George Clooney's Dr. Doug Ross. I need your help. Turn the camera off. With Doug Roth, we were looking for a bad boy, and George fit the bill. <laughs> Tell him that you don't think about me when you're with him. Hey, hey, hey. There are no clear good guys and bad guys. Have you told the mother and the patient that you're HIV positive? None of your damn business. So many of the other characters are really painted in, in complex ways. Well, you love them and you hate them at the same time. My character, you, you tend to hate more than anything else. Can't have too many extra Romanos running around spicing up the gene pool, can we? Corday and Romano have a feisty, difficult relationship. But it was Dr. Corday's affair with Dr. Benton that raised eyebrows. There hadn't, up until then, been so many relationships between people of different races. ERs tremendous success is rooted in its simple storytelling. I directed the episode where um, Carter finds Lucy Knight at the end. Rather than show the violence, I wanted to show the human response to the violence, at which Noah totally dove into. Kelly Martin, who was on the show, had to go through this terrible thing. She was extraordinary. She had the most amazing focus. And um, I'm actually proud of that scene. This show is something that will be with us for all our lives. The unit's looking to you, Mark. You set the tone. Anthony Edwards has passed the reins to Noah Wiley's Dr. Carter. You set the tone, Carter. What? Everybody knows I'm leaving the show. Work on your jump shot. I'm talking about, you know, what's it going to be like. So to know, you know, 
we're never going to leave this show. It's because these are going to rerun and play, and you've been in people's, you know, hearts and minds. We'll be back with Brooke Shield, Leah Thompson, Kirstie Alley, and more. Watch TV. Going out tonight with that hair you washed this morning? No problem. L'Oreal introduces new Fresh Vive shampoo and conditioner. With Fresh Vive, morning fresh hair stays that way the whole day, no matter how crazy life gets. Fresh Vive's patented Citrus CR Complex cleans totally with zero stripping and conditions just right with zero buildup. So my hair stays morning fresh and light and won't fall flat. New Fresh Vive from L'Oreal Paris. Hair so fresh and light, you'll love it from morning to night because you're worth it. Summer is one of my favorite seasons. Makes me think of fireflies. Ice cold lemonade. I'm driving with the top down. Okay, fine. Summer makes me think about the summer event at Payless and getting smart deals on great shoes. Look smart, Payless. Two girls tough burritos. Bring it on. <laughs> it's big, it's beefy. It's the grilled stuffed burrito from Taco Bell. Seasoned beef, three melted cheeses, sealed inside a grilled tortilla. The affordable heavy duty portable is just a buck ninety nine. For the heaviest meal on wheels, you gotta think outside the bun. Hidden Valley is coming to the Dallas Farmers Market, asking folks. How do you like your ranch dressing to taste? Just a full flavor. You know, I like to taste it. Spices that are really good. Like Hidden Valley ranch dressing. It's creamy, delicious. It just tastes like no other dressing. My favorite. Well, I believe you ought to stick to the original. Hidden Valley ranch dressing. We made it first, we made it right. That's what ranch dressing is supposed to taste like. Hidden Valley ranch, the way ranch is supposed to taste. Discover the forgotten lash with Lash Discovery from Maybelline. The lash-catching mini brush gets to lashes others can leave behind. Corner to corner, top and bottom. For longer, new multitudes of lashes. Lash Discovery, now in waterproof. It's Maybelline. Introducing the totally new 2003 Ford Expedition. Now you can achieve maximum inner space within seconds. Exclusive powerful third row seats Whoa. that fold flat at the touch of a button. The totally new 2003 Ford Expedition. It has no equal, it has no boundaries. Later on an all new Tonight Show, Freddie Prince Jr. reveals a practical joke that just won't go away. Every movie, what is going on? And Bill O'Reilly's cry for help. Run now, Hillary. Plus Brian Adams and headlines. Here's irony butts man guilty of dealing crap. <laughs> Stay up for Jay with Freddie Prince Jr. tonight. And on Conan, John McEnroe, Lauren Graham, and Conan's in a particularly festive mood. You better watch. Please, don't make us call. Tonight at 10 on NBC5. A suspected sniper returns to North Texas tonight. New information about the hours before the deadly shooting at a McKinney hospital. Police are working really hard to give you a ticket, but there's an easy way to stay out of trouble. And getting your prescriptions filled in Mexico is cheap and easy, but what are you really getting? NBC5 investigates. Plus, a tornado tore apart a landmark restaurant tonight. You see the new room with a view. Tonight at 10 on NBC5, your source for live local late-breaking news. The reason why I'm stopping you this evening is that neither one of you are wearing your seatbelt. Uh, is there any reason for that? There's no reason. Use your cop for citation. Please buckle up and drive safe. Welcome back. We talked a lot about the big must-see hits this evening, but there's two sides to having a show on Thursday night. An upside and a downside. Yin and yang. As you'll see, Musty TV can be both a blessing and a curse. Musty TV, NBC. Uh -huh. You sink or you swim? Good luck. Pretty quickly on Thursday night. But I, I'm lovely and charming. <laughs> sure you are, loser. It's great to be on Thursday night, and it's a ridiculous amount of pressure. Man, there was a lot of pressure. This is a challenge, and it's got to be answered. Am I right? Right! Good news is, everybody's looking at you. Bad news, everybody's looking at you. Are you still in touch with your wife? Only by check. 
The sitcom Dear John replaced Night Court on Thursday in the fall of 88. Come on, tell us about your sex life. I would, Kirk, but then I'm afraid you'd tell us about yours. We were in the top ten virtually every week. I thought, hey, this is great. We're going to be another Cheers. No. <laughs> Midway into season two, Dear John left Thursday. It ran for two more years in nine time slots. What happened? My mother called. I can't find you. Are you canceled? And I said, I don't know. But you know what? We're not on Thursday nights. Wings made its Thursday debut in 1990. Oh, Major Hooters, we can't let the... What did you say? Major Hooters, Major Bob Hooters, U.S. Air Force at your service. There's seven characters on the show. It's in an airport in Nantucket. I mean, who would know that this is the formula that, you know, people would want to watch? It's a subpoena, toots. <laughs> you can consider yourself served. <laughs> so can you. Wings ran for eight seasons, but only half were on Thursday. Hey, I guarantee you someday we'll look back on this and laugh. Wings flew through 16 time slots on five different nights. It just kept getting an audience. It kept staying on the air, and... In the fall of 95, the single guy took its shot at must-see success. You married people have this bizarre need to turn everyone else into married people. You're like vampires or Mormons. We had such a wonderful cast, starting with the very handsome and talented and Oscar-winning Ernest Borgnine. Kathy is getting married. Oh, my Lord, no. Kathy's getting married? Yes. Who the heck is Kathy? <laughs> Joey Slotnick. Remember a couple summers ago when everybody got married? Yes. You didn't. Okay. The Single Guy was a top ten show for two seasons. But with a huge lead-in from Friends, any drop in viewership was glaring. The Single Guy is moving to NBC Wednesdays. What happened? Why are they sending us to Siberia? Exiled in 97, The Single Guy was gone within a month. It was unfortunately one of the few top ten shows I think that got canceled. <laughs> I mean, we cancel shows that were in the top five. We maybe pulled the trigger too fast on some of them. What are you doing? My friend and I are throwing fruit out the window in a somewhat misguided attempt to meet men. Making its debut the same season as The Single Guy was a single girl called Caroline in the City. Check out the guys. Gay, gay, way gay, gay. Who cares? Straight. Ooh. See ya. Really exciting. The day they told me that our show was going to be on Thursday night, but what comes with that is a lot of responsibility. Will you marry me? The second year of, of Caroline, they, they kicked us off at Thursday night, and I, I begged, I cried. I <laughs> Do the sheep come with this, or are they actually... We were moved to Tuesday night, which was good. We were with Frazier, and that was like the second best time slot. Damn! Sorry. Natalie Brooke Shields is getting a show on Must See TV Thursday. NBC's giving her a new look to fit in. Ta-da! The Rachel. Oh, um, no. I was rather naive, and I, I'm glad I was. Caroline in the City was replaced by Suddenly Susan on Thursday in the fall of 96. Suddenly Susan, you're interesting. Of course I am. In fact, I'm one of the most fascinating people you'll ever meet. <laughs> we felt like we had been um, allowed to be in this, uh, the Cool Kids group. Suddenly Susan was the number three show on TV in its first season, but it was moved in the summer of 97. Once we went to Monday, it was, you know, just hitting the bottle, a lot of loneliness, and uh, watching Oprah reruns. The show ran for three more seasons on two different nights. I got an education pretty quickly about nights of the week. You still love your husband. Oh, that is a lousy thing to say. In 1997, Cheers star Kirstie Alley returned to sitcom in Veronica's Closet with Seinfeld as her lead-in. Seinfeld had followed Cheers. Hello. Boom kick your ass up there. So I thought it was only fair, boom, Seinfeld, me, kick my ass up there. And it came out of the shoot very hot. I know I should change the world, but right now I just want to change my ass. <laughs> Veronica's Closet ran on Thursday for two years before moving in its third and final season. 
Your husband was spotted coming out of a hotel room with a blonde. George! And where are ahead of you. <laughs> it's like Thursday's must-see, Tuesday is like must-not-see. Don't watch this. Whatever you do, don't watch it. It's must-find TV. I'm Jesse. Hi. Hi. Jesse debuted on Thursday in the fall of 98. You gotta be the best of the best. There isn't room for good. There just isn't. Like so many promising series, Jesse had only a brief shining moment in the must-see TV spotlight. It's funny that 8.30 after Friends is always trouble. Cut to clip reel of troubled shows. Hats off to all the producers, actors, writers, directors, and everyone who's ever taken on the challenge of must-see TV. We'll be back with more of 20 years of must-see TV. Police say this is the prime suspect in the sniper shooting at a McKinney hospital. Plus, why you're more likely to get a traffic ticket in the next few days. Coming up on NBC5 News at 10. and counting. The 210 horsepower supercharged Nissan Xterra. Everything you need, nothing you don't. Insider Pizza from Pizza Hut is loaded with it. Cheese inside and out. Six kinds baked inside two thin crusts. And more cheese on top. We're Pizza Hut. We put cheese in places you've never dreamed of. The Insider Pizza, only from Pizza Hut. If you once worshipped the sun, fight damage with new Olay Intensive Restoration Treatment with Vita Niacin and the most concentrated pro-retinol available over the counter. Zoning in to fight past damage. New Total Effects Intensive Restoration Treatment. He's your big brother, and you want underwear just like his. That's why there's new Pampers Easy Ups, training pants that look and fit like underwear and feel softer than the leading training pants. To you, it is underwear. New Pampers Easy Ups. I'm in front of people all the time. I'm training to be a Pilates instructor. When I'm up in the front, I'm demonstrating kind of like a flight attendant. People can see. If I didn't get a close enough shave, that's like right there in my face. I didn't think that there would actually be deodorant that would make and keep the skin under my arms smooth. Dove helped with the shave bumps. Dove combines strong protection with one quarter moisturizer. It's the antiperspirant that really gets skin. It's got to be the moisturizer. It's just much more comfortable. I'm not afraid to do this. Announcing free long distance and free roaming. A couple of steps forward. All you have to do is be on our network, or it becomes somewhat less than free. A little to the right. How big is our network? Not that far. It's nationwide. One step back, please. How wide is nationwide? Well, it depends on where you are in the nation. Some nations are smaller than others. A little to the left. And that's true anywhere in America. Yeah. Perfect. Why not get Singular Nation? Never pay long distance, never pay roaming. It's that simple. Self-expression is simple with Singular Nation. Celebrate NBC's 75th anniversary with this collector's edition book of television memories. Available at shopnbc.com slash NBC store or your local retailer. CGB NBC. That's the story, folks. 20 years of Must See TV. It's a legacy of wonderful comedy and great drama. I'm honored to be a part of it. And I'm honored to have shared it with you, the audience that made the whole thing possible. Thank you, and good night. Oh, and keep watching. Maybe we'll come back and do this again in another 20 years. Later on The Tonight Show, Jay's scooping up Scooby-Doo's Freddie Prinze Jr. and factors in Bill O'Reilly.